Good evening and welcome to the March 23rd work session um, for the Penfield Town Board. And would everyone rise and please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. Uh, for the purposes of the record, I uh, just want to mention that all town board members are present except Councilperson Lee. Uh, we also have the Director of Developmental Services, Carrie Ivers, Director of Planning and Engineering, Mark Valentine, and Director of Finance, Barbara Chertow, as well as our Deputy Town Clerk. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, I would like to approve the minutes of Wednesday, March 9th. May I have a motion? I'll move them, Madam Supervisor. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Councilperson Draw, a second by Councilperson Cole. If there are no comments or questions, we can have a roll call vote. Sinti? Aye. Draw? Aye. Cole? Aye. Akenden? Aye. Four ayes. Great. Uh, monthly reports, we have none for this time uh, as it's the end of the month, so we will revisit this back in April again. And we have no public hearings this evening. Um, I'd like to move on then to discussion of ARPA funds. Or were we going to do something different? No? Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so that's something that um, I and Barbara Cherto will discuss with you. Um, you have before you, we handed you um, the town board members a sheet of ideas we have. So just to back up a little bit, um, the town has now is going to receive $3.8 million in ARPA funds. Um, some of it we've already received, some of it we still have to receive. Um, there are all kinds of ways we can use the money um, within parameters that they set. Um, but we have to decide on a plan by 2024, I believe. And then the money must be spent by 2026, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So what Barbara and I talked about with the help of the town staff is really um, getting some ideas put forward for you to start to react to, and we can have a long discussion about it. I'm sure this will be the first of, of many. Um, but to pick projects that uh, benefited the entire community, mm -hmm. we want to make sure that the entire community benefits from these monies. Um, and we're also looking at geographically, you know, Penfield is a large town. We don't, we want to spread out, you know, our projects. Um, and so we came up with about five to start with. Um, the first one is uh, pickleball courts at Shadow Pines, which would benefit our seniors and families. The second one is our improvements to the Four Corners District. Um, that includes things like stamped concrete and replacement of pavers, uh, also some decorations um, to beautify the area. Completing the LaSalle's Landing restroom and shelter. Also upgrading to LED for street lights, which has been a project that the town has wanted to phase in um, if we could use some of the ARPA money for that. Again, that there's some cost savings to the town down the line. So it's a good investment in infrastructure. Uh, and then also the Philbrick Park restroom needs some upgrades as well. Mm -hmm. So those are just ideas we just wanna discuss. Anyone? Mm -hmm. uh, what is your reaction to this list, are you? Th are there things you would like to add or see different? Okay. Well, <clears throat> and when I saw the list, uh, the pickleball courts, I think, is a, is an important one because it does, is going to cost a lot of money, but it does um, significantly impact a lot of the seniors who don't have programs out there right now. But what I would like to see, if it's possible, is to add a restroom facility there as well, because that's one thing that's lacking in the uh, Shadow Pines. Right now, if we start developing it in any way, there's no restroom. And I look back to Rafa's Park, 
that was the first thing we did before we put together the um, fields and the lodge and all that, uh, not lodge, the shelter, was to have that. So that's one of those things you always need. <laughs> and I, I would like that on there. But I think that would be a great beginning for Shadow Pines that if we put some of this money in there to, to move it along since we don't have all the money that's um, needed right now ourselves in our budget. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll just take these comments down yep. and then bring this back. Okay, so we'll make sure that we add the restroom facility. I okay. would agree, and I would agree with Councilman Cole. I, I know how important a restroom facilities are, and I know we've got a couple others in other parts of the town, having one being down at Channing Filbert Park, the other at LaSalle's, the need for, you know, for one down there as well. I guess I like the start of this list, uh, mm -hmm. Madam Supervisor, and, and Barbara, I know that in the people in the town that have kind of given us some ideas, I like how we're spreading this around the town. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'd like to maybe see other, you know, other, some other ideas, open this up and see what folks in the community maybe think about. I know it's something mm -hmm. that maybe that, okay. I know that's uh, big on your list, um, that having uh, the community give us impact, input on what they like to see. Um, right. around um, the town. I think that's really important. I think this is a great start. Yeah, like to so to address your point, um, this is just the first of many discussions yeah. and we'll capture all the information from the town board and then um, it's our intention to have public information sessions about this so that the public has an opportunity to comment as well. Okay. Um, any other questions or, or comments about any ideas you'd like to throw out? The LED lights is really good too because that's something that impacts our environment. It's, 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 it covers the whole town. Um, anything that could help on that level, mm -hmm. you know, environmental uh, concerns, or whatever that we could put forth. I'm not sure where maybe the town engineer might have some ideas, or, or um, certainly the residents would be probably helpful too. Right, and we were thinking with the LED street lights. Um, you know, there's some cost savings to. So it's an investment mm -hmm. in your infrastructure and mm -hmm. um, should save the town money over the long haul too. So even better, yes. That was why we, um, you know, thought to put that down as a start start idea. And, and I think to to piggyback onto that with the street lights, it's you can see where some have already been retrofitted across the town and mm -hmm. what a significant difference it really makes. Um, I think from a safety standpoint, a public safety perspective. So um, that's certainly all these are good good ideas. Um, and, and that one too, I think, is has got some value to it as well. Um, and I, I think um, Mr. Tate had started a project in reviewing what was out there. And I don't know if this number was based on that report. Yes. It was. So yes. Yeah. Right. No, we assigned value based on what what information we had. Great. Um, so these are pretty accurate. <clears throat> Um, so we'll continue to look at our capital improvement project list, which goes out five years, and um, also get some additional ideas. And then um, we'll come back to the next work session with a more complete list. And then after that, I think we really should um, start to get some public feedback, and we'll set some public information hearings. If that's okay with everyone? Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds good. Terrific. And if there's any, if you get any thoughts in, over, you know, over the next couple of weeks, shoot me an email. I'll add them to the, add them to the list here, and then work with, with Mark and Eric to tie some numbers to your ideas. Great, thank you. Sounds good. All right, thank you, Barbara. Yes, sure. thank you. All right, uh, the next item: revision of fee schedule for the peddlers permit application and peddlers permits. Um, Amy could not be here this evening, our town clerk. So I just want to. Uh, cue this up for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, we are constantly looking at our fee schedule in relation to other towns and what they charge. And what we were finding uh, is that, you know, Penfield um, was not charging even nearly as much as mm -hmm. some of our neighboring towns. Never want to be the most expensive, but we also don't want to be the least expensive either. Um, and we have not revisited our peddler's fees in quite a while. So these are the fees that uh, they pay the town to get a permit to go door to door. So um, Amy Stecklov, our town clerk, mm -hmm. provided you with an Excel spreadsheet and I apologize, I could not sort it by population, but you get an idea of application fee mm -hmm. and the, the versus the size of the town. 
um, and she is suggesting that we increase our uh, permit fee to from $100 to $250 per year and then $100 for each additional uh, permit that that a business applies for so you can see how that would fit in to this chart and madam supervisor by by comparing that to what uh, relative other towns are doing we that puts us more on par with with being fair and equitable yes the, as other towns are as well yes absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely mm -hmm. um and this is uh, again something that the town board sets they have the authority to set these fees and we're not we're not just looking at uh door-to-door -door fees we're looking at fee schedule in general is this something you want to move to put on the agenda for next week if you are in agreement we can put this on the agenda to pass a resolution, you know, we can decide that we like it and we want to approve a resolution and set these fees, or we can table it for further discussion, whatever you'd like. No, I think the recommendations from uh, the town clerk are, are reasonable. Mm -hmm. I'd be in favor of moving it forward. Okay. Okay, I'll second. All right, so, I have a motion by Councilperson Ockenden and a second by Councilperson Cole to draft a resolution for April 6th approving these the peddler fee schedule. All right, may I have a roll call vote? Cinti? Aye. Draw? Aye. Cole? Aye. Ockenden? Aye. Four ayes. Okay. <clears throat> Moving on to action item C, follow up on special use permit public hearing for 1129 Empire Boulevard. Barbell. Hi. Hi. So I wanted to add this to the agenda. Um, obviously, last week the public hearing was conducted. We had no comment. I think, uh, largely in, fa in, in light of the fact that it's a former restaurant being replaced by a restaurant. So, mm -hmm. not much uh, there except a new operator. Um, if the board was amenable, I would move forward with a resolution to approve this special use permit. One of the conditions I would provide is the any signage come back to the town board mm -hmm. for administrative approval um, before they proceeded to the building permit uh, required for said uh, signage, just so that the town board's got some comfort level in what they're proposing. Mm -hmm. uh, there were no really other physical alterations being considered. We'll have the other standard language about adhering to all permitting requirements and other state agencies you know, that may be required. Um, they'll certainly be working with the fire marshal's office to get the operating permit um, up and running for this location in, in this operation. <clears throat> Any concerns or questions or? You know, the only thing I have is the, I, I'm not sure if we can do this, but have a have a parking plan and as well come to us before they open. Because, you know, the biggest fear is, is it's going to be such a big deal because it's new to our area and it's very popular in its current areas that being on Empire Boulevard, it could become an issue. I know even, even McGregor's, when they first came, there were people parking up and down Empire Boulevard illegally and all, you know, and, and it's kind of this fear that they have, uh, that they understand this, the parking lot as it is may not be adequate to, to um, reflect their new business. If there's some way that they could show how they're going to address it, maybe they're gonna change a little bit in the pattern or maybe they'll, have somebody out there to, like at uh, K2 Brewing, to make sure that uh, people are parking so correctly? That's not something that had come up either during the work session conversation with the applicant or even during the public hearing. Um, certainly, if well, it be there was. We oh, was there? I'm well, sorry. I know, Perhaps I mentioned I it might before. be misremembering. <laughs> it's always a concern of mine. Yeah. Absolutely. So, I mean, certainly what we could do is make sure that the applicant knows that if parking were to become a problem, the town's the first folks that get calls when that happens. Mm -hmm. So if there were to be some issue that he's fully aware that he may have to revisit the parking. Okay. Um, I don't know if there's a way to reconfigure and improve. I, typically, right. I think it's, I mean, I maybe think it's not. maximized, but I think well, in other applicants in the past, we've had them have people out there knowing that it's kind of the grand opening 
flagging people, you know, right. waving people to, because once you get one car that parks on Empire Boulevard, they think the parking lot is, is totally full, and oftentimes there's many spaces in the back that are still open. So I think mm -hmm. well, that, having that, some employees, right. attendants to kind of just help, you know, usher people around and wave mm -hmm. them in, I think it, yeah, is, during, is often helpful. Well, during grand okay, opening. Okay, so maybe it's not in the resolution. Well, just make well, sure you or well, whoever the contact is absolutely. that they, they, they address the situation up front, you know, for the opening. But if something, if it doesn't get, a, if it doesn't go away, if it's that popular that they right. come back, I think we to, could have you know, that. In, I, I think we could have that in the resolution. I, 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 the piece is, um, the one thing is, I believe, Carrie, I thought that they mentioned that they were re reducing the size of the tables, uh, uh, what the seating was going to be inside. There was some piece of that that to modify because when the parkings were at, was asked about as far as how much what they were going to be doing inside as far as. Um, they were. The, they also stated they weren't doing takeout at this location. Right. right. So it's that'll help right. minimize yeah. because then only people parking there are people sitting there. Sit, right. And mm -hmm. often um, sites it can become overwhelmed with parking when you've got both seated, mm -hmm. um, you know, dine-in uh, patrons, but also pick up mm -hmm. and, you know, and so if they're not doing that, that'll help alleviate mm -hmm. potential parking uh, concerns or issues. Um, we can, I can work with uh, Dick to look at some language in the resolution that addresses um, parking. Certainly for the grand opening, that's something that typically gets handled more like administratively, mm -hmm. um, but that we can maybe have some language in there that the town board may require to come back if, if it becomes an issue nuisance, or yeah. park, the parking exceeds the site's capacity. Okay. Well, when when I'm thinking though that when you did meet with the owners of this property and they wanted to move in, they did look at the parking as well. They absolutely did. Yeah. What is the capacity of the parking lot currently? Um, you know what? I don't have that information off the top of my head. I can okay. get that information and share it with the board. Okay. If that's okay. Yeah. Um, so, I think what we can do is just. Um, I think we still can move forward. Okay. And I, I, I'm sensing that you want to approve this mm -hmm. business with, yes. you know, the conditions we just talked about. So, but I w I'm just very curious about, you know, I know that there's a formula for determining how much parking you need versus seating. Right. So I'd just be very curious about that. Okay. At, at the April 6th meeting. How's that? We Absolutely. Have that in the resolution that fits the, the parking fits the, the seating. It should be the in there. It should, it should be, be in, in there. there. Yeah. yeah. Yes, we can we can include the the parking count. Um, I believe that the well, I believe the the site's already code compliant mm -hmm, with respect right. to having enough mm -hmm. parking on site to accommodate a building of that size. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so we'll and I'll confirm with them the seating count uh, for the restaurant so that we right. can have the max seating amount and we know what that is going in. I think that's what I was really getting at. Actually, was okay. you know that parking always has to be taken into consideration anyway when. Right. When you're approving, we're going through the approval process. Absolutely. So, okay. Okay. All right. All right. Um, so do you need a motion on that? Go ahead. I will move that we move ahead, we go ahead with that and we approve the, um, the special use permit public um, on, uh, along with the stipulations of the parking and the seating that, mm, that are signage. in that. And signage, signage comes signage back. signage also in that um, for the barbell mm -hmm. okay. uh, location. Okay. Wonderful. Yep. I'll second that. Okay, so I have a motion by Councilperson Draw, a second by Councilperson Ockenden to move forward to prepare a resolution for the April 6th meeting um, granting a special use permit with conditions as noted by Councilperson Draw. Mm -hmm. Okay, roll call vote. Cinti? Aye. <coughs> Draw? Aye. Cole? Aye. Ockenden? Aye. Four ayes. Thank you. All right, and you're still on deck, Carrie. Here I am. Administrative conditional use permit for 2254 Penfield Road. So this property is located in a planned development district, which is why it's before the board. Um, I, I, in review of what was in, um, presented to me, I believe it's a candidate for administrative approval. This is a, a, an existing dental uh, practice, and a new dentist is coming in. So it's an exact in-kind uh, replacement of the operation. Um, as part of that application, the, um, the incoming uh, dentist practice would like to replace signage and if possible, relocate the signage. Um, I've been sending updated information mm -hmm. um, 
to reflect the proposed signage and then also to show the um, the proposed location. Now, I have up on the screen in front of you, hopefully everyone can see it. That is the applicant here? The applicant is here. Okay, why don't you come on up? Definitely want you to be able to see the I screen. Think which yeah. table you'd like. <laughs> so yeah, there's no wrong table. So I know this is um, not a legislative session, but if you could just introduce yourself with your name and address. Um, my name is Aaron Rosen. I'm a dentist currently at East Avenue Dentistry. Dr. Mark Feldman has had this practice. Do you guys know where New Renaissance is located? Have you guys driven? I don't remember. It's, it's on Penfield Road. Oh, yeah, right? yes, 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 yes. At the corner <laughs> of Pembroke Pem on the side. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, Pembroke, that, that property right next to Pembroke is not owned by that, that office. There's a uh, strip of land that's owned by Pembroke Estates or whatever it's called. With a structure on it or no? There's nothing on there. So the first structure, though, is your exactly. building. Right. Is that right. So this parcel, th this parcel right here, that's uh -huh. where 2254 is. The area of land um, that um, the doctor's referencing is actually just the part of the private drive, and it's yeah. just the width. Not The private drive in this case extends beyond the pavement, and, and it's sort of the private drive's it's not a public right of way, it's a private right of way, if that makes sense. So this whole swath of land is not a parcel, it's part of the, um, the drive. Okay, and who, uh, who's joining you this evening? Oh, hi, Anthony Scalia, I'm his uh, attorney. Nice to meet you. You as well, thank you. Okay, so tell us a little bit about this project. Yeah, so it's currently a dental office. Um, Dr. Feldman has been there 17 years. He's gonna be hopefully staying on is the plan. Um, the, I don't know if you notice there's dead trees and um, it needs aesthetic facelift, mm -hmm. both internally and externally. Um, but Dr. Feldman um, will still be there and continue, his team will still be there. Um, and the, to have a, another awesome, to add to the many uh, awesome Dental offices that are currently in Penfield <laughs> stay exactly as it is. Please. So it would stay New Renaissance, mm -hmm. or would it change names? Um, right now, it will be New Renaissance. Mm -hmm. I think long term, um, that's something that's going to change. Okay. And I honestly don't know what that's going to be, but it, I think a lot of people have trouble spelling Renaissance. I was told. <laughs> it can be difficult for some. Two yes, I understand. No. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> two S's. <laughs> uh, yeah. But. Um, can you tell us a little bit about, are there gonna be any changes in the hours or um, the number well, of staff working at any one time, things like that? Yeah, um, roughly the same amount of staff. There will be no drive-by as <laughs> per we just discussed. Um, no, same hours, um, same amount of parking, roughly, you know, uh, no, no big changes. Okay. Um, I, I mean, the plan is to keep the exact hours, at least for the next year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Any other questions from the board? No. And are we talking about the sign yet? Or no? I haven't. He's not ready yet, right? The sign. Well, the sign. The sign. Oh, I have the. Yeah. I can. We, we can talk about the sign. I apologize. The computer decided to restart and um, <laughs> oh. update itself on its own, so I do apologize. I think like you didn't know what you were going to call it yet. Oh. Yeah. But he wants. Going to stay with the current. Well, well, the, we're going to keep the new Renaissance right. on the new sign. Okay. There needs time. to be the sign is. Um, and you'd like to move the sign. Exactly. The sign is really. I think it's actually a um, public health issue. Like people are not seeing this business, and they're breaking. When I'm literally there to with the sign company, mm -hmm. they slam their brakes to turn in because they didn't see, it, see. this business. The sign's really deep. The sign's really right, deep right. property. He wants to move it closer to the line so it's more visible in the street. Thank you. So people know where they're going. I have a question exactly. for Mr. Valentine. Ten feet away from a sidewalk, is that what we... And I think uh, Carrie's been working with the doctors just to determine um, where it is and then establish where the state right-of-way is. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this board can't approve having something in the state right-of-way. Yeah. Right-of-way is always a little hard to determine, just, yeah. you know, standing out there. I think... Um, you provided your stuff, and I, we briefly had a conversation today. Um, you provided your lot line information, everything else, and I think as long as we can get a dimension off the building of where you're looking to put your sign. Which we do have. Okay, yeah. that's something we can go out and take a look at, and then, you know, I don't 
foresee it being a sight distance issue that we would just take a look at it, make sure anybody pulling out of Pembroke, it's not so close to the road that now you're blocking sight distance down the street or yeah. Yeah, I mean, I that. need to fall back on the zoning board experience that, you know, that Linda and I both have, you know, I like to usually see where the stakeout is. So we can see where the sign is before we start approving yeah, things moving. Put some lath out there mm -hmm. of where you'd like to have it, you know, put a couple of stakes, the board can take a look at it as well as, you know, staff to go out there and just. Yes, we, we were gonna, we were trying to work with the applicant to identify, to show where, we know, we know where the current sign is mm -hmm. on the mapping. Unfortunately, the survey map doesn't depict it. It didn't capture it as part of the survey instrument map, which is unfortunate because that's always a nice landmark to measure what's there now. Mm -hmm. um, we were advising the applicant, we have the measurement on the front setback from the building to the edge of the front property line would be 50.9 feet. So that's a great place to sort of mark where the, not only to mark the edge of the uh, private property and then show where the proposed sign might go. There is going to be, in this instance, having the sign close to the property line like, and I apologize, I'll, I'm gonna pull up an, the, another map really quickly, likely won't be problematic because there's such a wide right of way and the, the state's right of way seems to extend a pretty significant distance north of the sidewalk. In some cases, the right of way is only two or three feet off the sidewalk. In this case, there's a pretty wide stretch. Um, yeah, it appears, to, it appears to me from looking at the state appropriation in 91 or 97, that they move the they move the the state line from the street itself about 23 feet in. That's why there's a little jut mm -hmm. on the uh, on the survey. So the survey doesn't show the exact location of the sidewalk, but it's got to be at least you know 15 feet um, to the edge of the state right away from the sidewalk. So if he put it on the edge of his line. Um, Best I can tell from what we have, it'll be at least 10 feet from the sidewalk, probably closer to 15 or more. Okay, so I mean, I have no trouble approving this business, but mm -hmm. I don't feel comfortable approving any kind of sign until I just see with more more exact mm -hmm. measurements where it's going. Mm -hmm. am, am I the only one that feels no, this I, way? I, I agree. I would agree too. Well, we normally do that. Right. So. I, and I want to ask you a question. Before, when the, the previous dentist was in there, I remember the big the sign being going in there. Do you mom, I don't. No. You want maybe on the zoning board then? No. I was not. So was I was wondering. The smile sign. I mean, that's the no. other dentist. No. no. <laughs> yeah, there's a sign. There's a sign just up the road, um, that's 11 by 7 feet. That's 10 feet from the sidewalk. Yeah. So as so, we discussed, the awesome. right of way can vary mm -hmm. along the right. along 441. Right. So the edge of the edge of private property, as it relates to the existing sidewalk, really does vary from parcel to parcel, mm -hmm. um, and so that's the that's certainly the challenge here. And so even though a, a quarter mile down the road, the sign could be mm -hmm. located closer to the sidewalk because there's just the parcel line goes right up to the right. sidewalk edge in some cases. So that's the, the challenge for, the, for this board or for any board that has to mm -hmm. look mm -hmm. at signage. Um, when, and then using pictometry or the imagery to, uh, GIS imagery to try to measure is, an, a, is really mostly for estimating, it's not for exact location mm -hmm. because the way that the ortho imagery was flown is at an oblique angle plan and parcel lines are at a plan view. So the way they intersect is not always a little bit skewed. Um, I think um, in terms of we can have the um, applicant stake out the proposed location, then there could be some verification that it's not in the right of way. Thank you. Um, we can certainly do that. That's my idea. Are you okay with that? with that? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, this, this yeah. board can't approve a sign that's in the state right away, whether right. it wanted to or not. Right. So we just need to locate where your front property line is and then looking at the aerial, it's, you know, it goes, back you know, quite a ways, yeah, so I don't sense. think it'll be a sight distance issue on that end, but this board just can't authorize it to be in the right of way. If you say I want it five foot on the back side of the yeah. sidewalk, you're definitely in the right of way, and that's, that falls under the state DOT. That's not the purview of this 
Mm -hmm. Right, and important. and typically the, you know the, and certainly you could contact the state DOT to see if they would let you put something in their right of way. They're usually fairly um, selective about what can go in there. Well, they don't want fixed objects in the right of way, and mm -hmm. it's probably a four mm -hmm. to six month process to. Well, have you looked at it? I mean, have you looked at where exactly you want the sign? Yeah, as I don't. As far as the right of way. Yeah, I, I have an idea. we we just. I guess there was some uh, miscommunication or, or some confusion, I apologize, with the survey and what, I, I did a lot of walking and driving around. I didn't realize, it looks fairly consistent that everyone is having, no one is having a sign 35 feet back, no one. And I took a lot of photos showing consistent mm -hmm. between 10 and 20 feet back from the sidewalk. And that is not 100% you know, learning from this experience. Yeah. I'm a better dentist than I am a sign placer. <laughs> um, totally that, understand right. you wanting to move the sign yeah. Yeah. closer yeah, to the road. Yes. Right. Don't have an issue with that. Right. It's For just sure. where exactly it's going. Okay. Yeah, I think the plan is, so it's 35 feet from the sign where it is right now mm -hmm. to the edge of the property line. So I think the plan is gonna be to move it just about to the edge of the property line before the right of way. Mm -hmm. um, there's no, Real concerns, obviously, we'll stake it out, but there's no real concerns that that's going to be a problem with the sidewalk clearance. So I think that's kind of what the hope is. So mm -hmm. if the existing sign is about, like, the edge of the the existing sign, the outer edge, right. is about 35 feet Correct. from the front building line, mm -hmm. that means they have about 15 feet they can move it. No, 35 through. feet from the property line to the, property. towards the street. So it's 35 feet from the edge of the sign to the property line. Okay. Now, did the surveyor stake the property line that's out there, or what's? Well, it, I don't, the math doesn't work out because we only have 50 feet from the front building line to the. Oh, you're right. yeah, you, Aaron, you must not have a. So this is why. I we can't do anything. No, no. Right. Yeah. You sure. We'll but have a measure the. Yeah, in any event, that's, that's the goal, is Perfect. to put it okay. down. Understood. At the edge of the line. Yeah. Yep. Get it. I just, we need we, to be precise right. mm -hmm. yes. with things. So yeah. um, I don't know if you would like to approve, do a condition or conditional use permit administratively, but not approve the sign, or do you just want a table? I think that's fine to say that we uh, administratively approve it because we don't have a problem with the dentist office, but yeah, we just need to see where the sign's going to be. Yeah. So if, um, when yeah. you stake yeah. it out, yeah. you know, let Carrie know so we would yeah. know. We could go take a exactly. look and, yeah. you know, We're compare fine. the line, you know, yeah. look it down the road, yeah. see if everything looks like it's... When are you hoping to take over ownership and... I think this is our, one of our last hurdles. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, everything else is ready to go, I think. Well, we certainly yeah. can grant you a conditional use mm -hmm. permit this evening. Okay. Oh, forgive me, I'm just... Uh, I, for this district, <laughs> it's a special use permit special in the use PDD. Oh. Yeah. So, so we do vote. Yes, on you do vote on it. Uh, okay. It just one minute. Want to make sure the reference is for special use permit. Okay. Okay. So well. you, that'll be fine. Yeah. You granted so, that, and then we just need to resolve the sign issue at a later date. Okay. So but we yeah. we agree. Thirty five feet back, it's going to be able to be moved forward. But you just want to see where exactly Absolutely. it is. Right. It right. Yes. Make yeah. sure yeah. it's not in the right away, and it's and not you're gonna, blocking anybody's yeah. vi yeah. visuals to something oh, yeah. else. Oh, yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Ms. Ivers and our incredible building department upstairs and code enforcement can help you with that. Yes. Oh. Like, you guys will help stake it out? We will help <laughs> stake it out. We'll come okay. and take a look at it once <laughs> you've staked it out. <laughs> or your sign contractor, so that's the other option as well. They're we pretty to custom to, to use yeah. it working with um, survey maps and understand how to position a sign in relationship to the survey map. Okay. Yeah, they can measure. I mean, it looks like it's 50.9 feet. If you go from the front of your building, measure 15.9 feet out. That's where your property line is. So it can't go any closer to the road than that. Right. Mm -hmm. So it would need to be some step back from that. So if you measure that far out, that's where your property line is because the sidewalk adjusts and moves. Mm -hmm. OK. OK. Sounds good. All right. Then may I have a motion for uh, a special use permit for 2254 so Penfield we'll Road? I'll second that. I have a motion by Councilperson Cole, second by Councilperson Draw. Mm -hmm. And a roll call vote. Cinti? Aye. Draw? Aye. Cole? Aye. Ackenden? Aye. Four ayes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck to you. Yeah. Thank you.
and we'll see you soon about the sign. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, moving on, action item E, application to rezone portions of 1788, 1790, and 1794 Penfield Road from R120 to the Four Corners District. So um, I'm pulling up the mapping now so that you all can mm -hmm. see um, the fact that these three lots um, are currently split zoned with the southern portion of the, um, the lots being in the Four Corners District and the back portion of the three lots being located in the um, R120. The applicant had approached uh, staff um, to ask about any potential for um, future uh, subdivision of land if they needed to do so for either financing purposes um, for the existing three parcels. Um, or also to potentially, you know, just for these, these three lots to have not be split zoned. Um, I th in looking at it with staff, it appeared that there might have been at some point just a, um, typically with these kinds of zoning districts, sometimes it's a, a fixed number. So like a 500 foot from the center line and then the line gets drawn. Um, but over time, some of the parcels have been uh, rezoned so that the full parcel is encumbered in one zoning district. Um, I, um, the applicants and the owner and the agent, um, the engineer representing the client or the owner um, is here. So if you'd like them to come up, they certainly, uh, they're available. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, What's you. that one right there? You got the cursor on the- This right no, here? No, no, up there that it's already been- That's in, That's the Hung Wah Plaza? Yes. And that all and it's all zoned into- Yes, it been, yes. Hi, um, would you introduce yourselves and give your name and address? Absolutely. Uh, my name is Cole Papasurji <coughs> with Marathon Engineering. Um, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Yep, and I'm Max Eberts. I'm one of the owners of the PB Penfield LLC, who's the owner of the actual property. And actually, Aaron Rosen is also one of the property owners as well. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so so for this, this would obviously a, a map amendment would require a public hearing to be set. Mm -hmm. um, so wanted to chat with the board to see whether or not this was a um, a potential rezoning application that you would want to move forward with in setting a public hearing. Um, split lot, split lot zoning is something that when there's an opportunity to um, correct it, it's uh, often a good idea. Um, split lot zoning creates issues with respect to you know, improvements to parking lots, or if there is any any develop any anything related to the existing development that were to try to be located in the fir the back portions of that lot, really couldn't be accommodated because it's a residential zoning district. So what what is what are in the lots right now the, that are zoned for our uh, for four corners? Which are the lots we're speaking of? What what businesses oh, what, are right now? Oh, forgive me. You know, the app, the owner could yeah, provide so, a better. Yeah, so right now it's the four buildings over between 1788 and 1794 Penfield Road. So it's got Dr. D'Amelio's uh, mm -hmm. rental yes. office. Mm -hmm. It's got Chick Magnet. And then it's got the two office buildings just to the left side of those. Um, and then the Edward Jones, that one up there? Then? Yeah, so okay. that one is also one of them. And then AVL Designs is the next big tenant um, in the next building. Over. So it's in between the roofing company and... Yep, roofing Chick company Magnet. and Starbucks. Well, there's really the piece of land. Yes, right there. Right in there. there. Kit property is the empty lot. Yep. Okay. I think was there before. Yep. So So are you, do you own all those buildings now? You? Yeah. You three? Yep, okay. so we actually closed um, in the middle of December. Okay. So, well, congratulations. Yep. Thank That's great. you. <laughs> So, Were you guys owners yeah. when I think this board talked about the fence that went up along the, the far end of the property? No, no, I don't believe so. I think we were with Dr. D'Amelio at that time. He oh, probably that, and that's when you you guys purchased from you bought yep. that all from it Dr. D'Amelio. The chick magnet. I think it was the issue was yeah. Yeah. brought up. Is your do you have an a plan for what you'd like to do with that property? Really, right now, we don't have any plan for it. You know, we just kind of wanted to open it up for a little bit more flexibility right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, right now, with the the plot in the back being single-family residential, it's, you know, we're really not going to build yeah. a single-family home back there, nor do I really think someone else will. 
Right. Um, so it's really just we want to get it cleaned up and open it up for some flexibility because the rest of the parcel is already four corners. Right. So we figured we'd at least keep it that. And then, you know, if somebody ended up wanting to do a little office back there, we could do something like that or, you know, whatever the zoning allowed for. Would you be fixing the the... the the access. road back there, the access road? We would is, have to, probably. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's one thing that this board, I know we've talked about for years, we've uh, wanted to... That was part of it. To finish yeah. that. That was part of it back in, <laughs> when Jim Castello was our director of development. That was his thing. It was always about, you know, until we get um, Dr. D'Amelio or someone someone to come in and, and develop that property, mm -hmm. we can't do anything with that road because it would be the owners of the property that would put the money in towards fixing that road. So... Yeah. You come in and want to do something that'll be a betterment yeah. for for the town on that level. Okay. Yeah. Right, and and the applicant and the owner is well aware of the 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 priority for this zoning district for the priority for cross access um, connections mm -hmm. between developments. The town's taken really great care over the last few several years to really develop that over time as mm -hmm. redevelopment happens. Mm -hmm. That um, increased cross access really helps improve traffic safety um, for motorists, pedestrians, everyone traveling to and through that area. Has that been something that you guys have looked at or uh, given any consideration to in the future? Honestly, we really, since it's so new in the project, we've considered a lot of different stuff, but really nothing concrete right now. Um, but yeah, I mean, we'd take a look at pretty much anything that, you know, you guys would look favorably on. I would, I for one would really like to see that access road and the cross access. That's that would be a um, that's a real. Okay. At least an even better condition. Yes, even if it's a not better permanent. condition for me to vote. Um, something that to doesn't vote. rattle you. Yeah, I, yeah, I almost, you know, right. almost popped my tires back. Yeah. I'm happy week, so. that you guys are, you know, seem very eager and, and excited yeah. to be in the um, Four Corners district. I live in that district, so I know. She walks yeah. it. I walk, and that's my, you're my hood. And so, yeah. I mean, and, it, and but you know what, it, it, it would be, you know, nice for every all the, the people that, the community that uses that area to come through, that comes through there, too. It yeah. makes it safer for all of us, too. Yeah, for sure. For public so. safety, I'm sure you, yeah. as a... Yeah, I understand that, you know, putting something too permanent there wouldn't necessarily be a great idea if you're mm -hmm. still looking at the property, but yeah. just any improvement to that, I think, would help the community mm -hmm. and, and okay. uh, access those businesses. Yeah. Okay. For yeah, it's sure. definitely something we'll take a look at. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm hearing that we're ready to set a public hearing for this. That you're I'll move that we have a public yes. hearing for all the reasons we just stated, plus <laughs> what, <laughs> what Carrie stated about the whole fact that um, when zoning. you have the opportunity yeah. to do so, we should right. um, look at the Makes sense. I'll, I'll the second that. Yeah. property to be one zoning. Okay. I have a yeah. motion from Councilperson Cole, a second from Councilperson Ockenden to set a public hearing to rezone portions of 1788, 1790, and 1794 Penfield Road from R120 to Four Corners District. Mm -hmm. May I have a roll call vote? Cindy. Aye. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Ockenden. Aye. Four ayes. Thank you. And, and I'll work with the applicant to let them know when the public hearing date will be set. Typically, we like to look at the calendar and not overload any one legislative meeting with too many public hearings. Right. So we'll be back in touch and let you know when that's going to be. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Right. Thank you, guys. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on to Mr. Valentine's sidewalk waiver request for the Arbors at Penfield. This is a continuation from the last public work session on March 9th, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, so with us this evening is the owner, um, Ralph Tatucci is the owner of uh, the Arbors and the developer of, of that uh, project. You can invite him up if you'd like to speak as well. Oh, Mr. Tatucci, would you like to come up? Um, so this is a continuation of our conversation from last week, and I'll just kind of introduce it and then um, allow Mr. Tatucci to, to speak as well. Um, but one of the items the board had asked, and I had shared this map, was to kind of highlight and, and demonstrate where the existing pathways are, um, where the existing sidewalks are, um, as well as, you know, recommendations from PRC and, you know, where those could, could tie back in. Um, so as Gary has it up, um, we highlighted in green and had sent this to the board where those um, proposed paths are for um, running along the right-of-way. Um, so you can see, again, Atlantic Avenue is running top to bottom, so um, it, 
sideways from where north to south is, but just as, as it fits on the plan. Um, those run uh, pretty close and parallel along with the, the roadway. Um, and then Carrie's showing the, the 250 side um, and then showing where those pathways run along that area and then an actual update of their map showed those two connections to the road um, in green in the middle. Um, I highlighted just the um, sidewalks on the proposed to be dedicated road. So the two yellow parallel uh, paths is for the dedicated road piece. There is a multitude of sidewalks, pathways through the rest of the development, so not to preclude that there is no other sidewalks. Um, but just highlighting our normal compliance, we look at is sidewalks internal mm -hmm. um, on a dedicated road, they're showing full compliance with that. And then sidewalks along the frontages, um, and as part of Gary's highlighted on there, is showing the 10 foot wide multi use path um, and how that is um, matching or paralleling where a sidewalk would go. And you can see, and then we can pull up Mr. DiTucci's mm -hmm. sketch. He dashed in red where the sidewalk would go, you know, if the sidewalk was put in. So those kind of follow along, and he's got those um, in red on, on his sketch, and we can, you know, share his his feedback. So you can see in, in red is where the, the sidewalk would go back side of the right of way, um, both on the 250 and on, on the Atlantic Avenue side. So you can see, especially along Atlantic Avenue, the sidewalk and the pathway would be really close together, and, and yeah. you have a 10 foot wide paved asphalt path, and then a uh, five foot wide concrete sidewalk would kind of be redundant, you know, in that location, at least in, in my opinion, PRC's opinion. Um, and then on the Atlantic, or excuse me, the 250 side, um, we're showing it's a little bit further away, but with potentially some returns back to the right of way, you know, does that meet the same intent? And I know, and I'll let Mr. Tucci weigh in, but he had some concerns on the proximity to the pond in that location, how that would work. Um, I literally put a marker on a page and said, you know, this is kind of an intent here and here and didn't get into the engineering design and how that would, you know, impact, but we can, you know, discuss that piece. And then um, a third piece before, you know, I turn it over is along the Penfield Center Road mm -hmm. frontage. So again, this is on the north side, right side of your page, is um, running along a, a residential, more rural street um, in the public hearings, those residents have asked not to have a sidewalk there. Um, he originally showed a driveway going out onto Penfield Center Road. They asked not to have that. They've scaled back the project so it doesn't impact that piece. Um, the only thing they're showing, and I highlighted in green, um, showing that they're showing a connection out to the right of way because there are some neighbors on Renwick Run. Some like it, some don't. Some have expressed that they would like to come in and walk and maybe mom or grandma would live in the development and they could walk over there with their kids and bike around. and and cheer into it and then I also dotted in to kind of show that uh, the green path going all the way around the development as well but um, outside of that so um, PRC's recommendation is if they're not going to put in the Penfield Center Road sidewalk that they pay the sidewalk waiver fee which is typically half the construction cost um, and I provided that to the board of you know where we pull our numbers from and then on the other two frontages um, you know I think with some you know, potentially slight modifications and I again I, I drew it there and it comes very close to the residence driveway um, I think there's some opportunity in there or if we go off the, that access drive we widen that piece out um, Mr. Tucci's comment was could we use this as the return to the to the roadway I think it's five feet wide I'd say we at least should upgrade that to match the 10 foot just so mm -hmm. if somebody's biking yeah. they can get on the 10 foot path and you know do some modifications in there but um, Board, have any questions on that before allow Mr. DiTucci to? So first of all, Mark, I just want to thank you for highlighting it. It's much easier to see this time around. Sure. So we really appreciate it. Mr. DiTucci, is there anything you would like to add? Uh, I think uh, the only uh, things that Mark and I were talking about potentially was to do some refinements of the, lo the two locations that he had marked. Uh, when you look at the uh, southwest intersection of Atlantic and 250, mm -hmm. There's an exception parcel anomaly, two acres, that we do not own. Mm -hmm. And uh, where our engineers had originally shown at the planning board's request a connection of the multi-trail, multi-use trail on our property to that parcel, mm -hmm. um, we were concerned as we looked at it more closely that it was really close to the stormwater facility that we're doing. Along with that, its connection to the exception parcel would fall pretty much in the middle of that parcel, which might limit the design flexibility for that uh, property owner. 
So we were suggesting that we would make the connection at the northwest corner of that exception parcel so that they could then, if, the, if they wanted the trail to continue, they could do it as well on their property along their westerly property line or along their northerly property line, depending on where their curb cuts ultimately might be located. So you're looking at keeping the options open for people in the future? Yeah. Understood. Um, and along with that, the the only other one is, the, as Mark pointed out, our northerly Route 250 uh, uh, vehicular access, I think it would make more sense to widen the sidewalk that we now have proposed there to the 10-foot width mm -hmm. so that it could be the connecting element for the multi-use trail. Uh, staying away from the pond for safety reasons as well as its proximity to our, our residential neighbor to the north. Go ahead. Question for you, Mr. DiTucci. So w when you go back to the corner of uh, uh, Atlantic there and 250, mm -hmm. um, Carrie, if you go, or Ms. Ivory, if you go back to that, that piece on the corner, so what you're saying now is we're, you're going to, can you follow that line, uh, follow the, where the sidewalk is going to be? It's going to go there, and it's going to go down there, and down there. So that whole big piece, so someone's going to have to, on that path, if you're on a bike or walking, you're going to be, you're going to be, have to go all, you're not going to go, you're not, you're not going to follow Atlantic Avenue in Route 250. You're going to have to go in. Oh. And intersect. I mean, that's just not his his parcel. I understand it's yeah. not his property. Yeah. So when that, but eventually, when that, if it got finished, right? But there will be an e that will that would be an access. Yeah. Histor <laughs> historically, um, the planning board asked us to make mm -hmm. a, originally a vehicular connection, connection to that exception parcel, mm -hmm. and upon reflection, they you know part of mm -hmm. the mixed use concept is to minimize vehicular traffic. Mm -hmm. So we opted to go with the multi-use trail connection to mm -hmm. the parcel mm -hmm. so that folks could walk if there's a convenience store or whatever. And looking at that, uh, instead of being sort of in the, the midpoint of the, the exception parcels north property line, mm -hmm. we're recommending that we make it at the northwest corner and then it's their option if they want to continue it along the westerly or northerly properly line or not at all. And that but actually something would be something that happens at the planning board level, depending on the right. type of development that's right. being proposed right. for that corner lot. Yeah. The planning board could then direct them how and where to make both of those connections yes. so that there's continuation of sidewalk, depending yeah. on what's happening on the site. Is there any sign of movement for that property? Not that I've heard of. We've not heard anything okay. recently from them. I know we've we've shared their information yeah. with, with Mr. Right. Tucci, so if they could, mm -hmm. you know, partner on that, um, you know, have not heard or have them come in, I, I'm sure they're kind of waiting to see how this plays out and some mm -hmm. of the other mixed-use play out, and then you know, obviously they may, you know, Because I would accordingly. definitely want to see that the connection for the uh, the total connection, know, even, even if we're doing a, or even if you're doing roads. a trail, and I would yeah. that I wouldn't want to see that. I would never want would, it not to be yeah, finished off. Is the planning board's working through this now and in requiring yeah. this to Mr. Tatucci in stubbing to their property line? You know, when that property comes in for redevelopment, mm -hmm. wouldn't then, see the planning board would require that you know additionally on the neighbor's property that they continue that and you know complete those connections. Mm -hmm. And then when you go back towards um, on uh, 250, or yeah, 250, when you go up towards um, the Penfield Center Road, then you're 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 saying right there that when you you're not gonna, that's where you're gonna end it, right? He's just looking to put a stub just to a the stub. to the shoulder and not have that red dashed line would be where a sidewalk would go. So the neighbors have asked. So not that to have there a would be no sidewalk at all on Penfield Center Road. Correct. Yeah. And so if I want to get over to out of that development and over to Renwick Run or any of the other, or I have to, I'm going to have to. No, there's an easement that green. Right, I can see the easement. Right, you can get to the shoulder of the shoulder. road, and then I shoulder. Mean, but then I'm back on. Yeah, uh, I mean, similar Penfield today, Center. people on Penfield Center Road, there are no sidewalks on the rest right. of Penfield no. Center Road. Right, I know they're road, not. So you'd walk yes. along the shoulder of the road. You'd, I just, I'm just clarifying for people so there, that we realize how what what would happen. And that's the part we're recommending that you know the, a sidewalk waiver fee be paid mm -hmm. for that portion there. That's not being installed. There is no multi-use path running along that piece at the neighbor's request, um, and then that those funds would go into the townwide sidewalk fund and then could be used in other locations and actually is our next item is 
talking about future sidewalks mm -hmm. um, in and around the town. And then the red line also depicts the area where a sidewalk easement would still be filed to yeah. the town. Yeah, and even if the Correct. waiver is granted, we always take the sidewalk easement as we've come before. Right. You know, this board and other locations well beyond my life and you know our generations, mm -hmm. it may be desired at some point in the future to have a sidewalk there, so at least we have the easement. Right. There's no issue, you know, concerns There's no the obtaining it from a future owner of property. It's already been granted to the town. Understand. So it's essentially the... Providing the best of both worlds. Right. It seems mm -hmm. well thought out for the future. Mm -hmm. So the multi-use path will go around the and entire... I, I, I dotted it in, so it goes all the yeah. way around. It cuts through the development, and that's okay. open to the public. So it's, mm -hmm. uh, I think, almost two miles of pathway in and around the development. There's sidewalks in there. Right. Um, I only highlighted the, the in yellow, the sidewalks on the, the proposed dedicated. to be dedicated road pieces, but you can see the, the multitude of paths that go around it. The walkways, there's walkways down the middle that, you know, go through, but that path, mm -hmm. you know, encircles the property. And then having that parallel to Route 250 and, and parallel to Atlantic, um, you know, there was just a lot of redundancy between if we make them install a sidewalk as well as the multi-use path, right. is there a benefit to that or, or can the 10-foot wide path serve both purposes? Mm -hmm. um, if it does, then, you know, not a need to be redundant on, in those locations. You right. Know, to, um, it meets those intents in the board. You know, was well, I don't that. want to speak for the board, but now that I've seen it visually and have a, a better sense of it, I'm very comfortable with the sidewalk waiver request. I think 10 feet is certainly more than adequate. Um, and it's certainly open to the public, which is what I was concerned about. Yeah, and that's the intent is to be bike friendly as, as well as mm -hmm. walking friendly. And then ultimately we'd like to have this loop around and then connect all the way down to the YMCA. So as you have the developments come up, you could live here, work here, shop here, ride your bike all the way down to the YMCA, work out, do something there, stop at business along the way, and then walk, bike back all off of 250, all off of, you know, the main roads that hopefully you decide, I mean, that's a lot of the intent is to get people out of their cars. Hopefully you live in a, you know, a smaller community area. It's walkable, bikeable, and you can live there. Hopefully there's, you know, businesses you can work there. Um, you know, and not have to mm -hmm. drive your car everywhere and decide I'm going to drive my car from here to the Y to go work out to then go back. Hopefully, right. no, I, I appreciate the connectivity the and all that, but are we jumping the gun by they haven't approved it yet in planning board to be doing a waiver when it's still before another board? Is the that a planning board and the planning board's attorney said that that action needed to come before this board? So, oh. yes. Yeah. Pre, pre approval. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, mm -hmm. I mean, whether the waiver is granted, that doesn't preclude the planning board from completing its process and approving the overall project. If the project doesn't move forward, obviously the waiver, you know, mm -hmm. just okay. runs with the developer. Right. Um, if something new happened to come in, it'd come yeah. back before this board and you'd, you'd have it over again. So it's. Okay. Is this a we, we look look at it different than a variance. It doesn't run with the land. It's kind of. Okay. Project specific. So if that Ralph went away tomorrow and. It didn't happen. They, yeah. I'm oh, not wishing oh, it. Not, Ralph. not wishing not, ill on you. No, not, not, not after 12 years. <laughs> yeah. But I'm saying Ralph and I've been around enough. But I'm not issuing ill on him. But just saying it doesn't preclude the board. Maybe from, this is a question you can't answer. But as far as I, I love the idea of you know two miles of the of a multi-use path, and I is, but I want I was wondering does the entire build out have to be done before the multi-use path is put in? No, uh, phase one, which is our application before the planning board at this time, um, Terry, yeah, Carrie, if you could, um, phase one is primarily those buildings that you see shaded in gray mm -hmm. along both Route 250 and uh, Atlantic Avenue, as well as what uh, com it comprises the um, vertical mixed-use buildings, which will be the sort of the non-residential hub mm -hmm. and the trail system will come in as you see it highlighted in green and as Carrie's outlining right now it will it will go to the um, northern edge of the main stormwater management facility and then uh, along route 250 Thank you. Mm -hmm. It'll go all the way to the uh, northernmost end of the of the development. Phase one goes all the way to that residential exception parcel at the northeast corner of um, 250 and mm -hmm. Penfield Center. 
I mean, so a, a significant portion will be would be done in phase the, one of the uh, multi-use trail is part of phase one's development, as well as the large open space next to the um, community building, the tennis pickleball courts, etc. Okay. Nope. Nope. To the to the right. Oh, this way. Nope. Right, right there. There you go. Sorry, wrong the, circle. Apologies. The, <laughs> wrong pickle. Yes, yeah, so there's the pickleball <laughs> tennis yeah. courts right there. There's the community. Yeah, so no, right we, there. we really are um, okay. looking at a significant portion of the trail system, as well of all as well as all of the uh, public open space, as part of Phase One. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for either Mr. Tucci or Carrie, Mark? Mark, is this kind of unique, the, the way this lines up with the two sidewalks, if you will, uh, being that close? Can you think of any other examples we've, we've had in the past that we've... Um, I mean, mixed use, this is the first um, waiver request, and just um, the other ones haven't had this much pathway in them. So um, I think this one has done a nice job of including the multi-use path all around it. Some of the other ones have sidewalks, and then they've got a main multi-use path down the middle. Um, so it's unique for this board you know, to have this, but I think it's unique also to have this multi-use path that kind of encircles the, the entire neighborhood. So I think, and I think that's, you know, a huge benefit to the community. It will be open to the public. You know, anybody that lives in Penfield can shop here, you know, dine here, you know, as part of it, use the pathways, um, you know, obviously. Um, so yeah, it is kind of unique. We don't have anything that kind of mimics this would have two paths kind of running parallel to each other. and. But Penfield Square, and I'm trying to visualize it right now, that has sidewalk um, up alongside the YMCA and then in front yep. of... And that's what I was square. kind of referring to. That one has the pedestrian multi-use path just down the middle. So that yeah. one doesn't have a loop all the way around it. They have just a, a wide path right down the center of it. And so then they kind of complied with the, the sidewalks on, on either end or along the frontage. This one has that path that kind of encircles all of it. So I think it's... The, the, the background and the thought behind it is we certainly could have done the same thing and run a north, south, central multi-use trail, but it wouldn't really integrate the individual neighborhood clusters that we have within the project. And that's part of what we thought was very important in meeting the goals of the mixed-use district is to not only invite the, the public onto the property, but to give them access to all of the facilities, you know, in, in the broadest sense that we can. Gotcha. So I just thinking about the developments that could go in between Mr. DeTucci's area and say the YMCA, could we end up with, you know, pieces? In other words, sidewalk here, the next development may have an internal path and back out the sidewalk, you know, where it's not a smooth. I mean, we're, we try to be consistent and as, as part of the planning engineering review, I mean, yes, we're dealing with multiple pieces. So it's, you've got pieces of a puzzle, but yeah. we try to have a, a a holistic vision and so as part of this you know where they're lining up their their driveway in the center kind of lines up with that that mid path as it comes up so as that piece comes in we'd say okay you need to kind of focus your development in this area and, and tie into here Line up with, yeah. as we're trying to yeah. vision what might happen with that exception parcel at the corner you know we'd kind of look sure. at well it might make sense to tie in exit points here and here and then when it says zone a but that one corner piece comes in we kind of steer them and say okay you've got ties on either side right. how do you make that you know match in so as we okay. leave stubs you know then you're the second one in you kind of need to pick it up from there and yeah so we've got some ability to, to tie it together and make tie that it in or if they yeah. can't they need to move it over then okay it's at their cost they need to slide it 10 15 feet this way or you know do some adjustment to and that I, I think in some ways it could be thought of in terms of how subdivisions develop over time sometimes you build a certain section of it and then you leave a stub street at the end with the hope right. and dream that someday you'll extend it further and that'll be connected in the in the future or provides an opportunity for connection. I think the nice thing here is the planning board with staff could direct them saying, this is the connection point. You have to provide this connection and continue the pedestrian pathway. Provide consistency to what's there. Yeah, Absolutely. No, that's important. And then who maintains that that path? Uh, that's all on you. Winter and <laughs> winter, summer, fly. Okay, great. Lucky you. <laughs> All right, thank you. Any further questions? How is everyone feeling about uh, this request? Yeah, I think having them side by side is really not beneficial at all. Yeah. So, okay. I would be in favor of the waiver. Okay. Why don't you move that? I'll make a motion to uh, 
grant the waiver as requested. I'll second that. Motion by Councilperson Akinen, seconded by Councilperson Draw. If there are no other comments or questions, we can have a roll call vote. Sinti? Aye. Draw? Aye. Cole? Aye. Akinden? Aye. Four ayes. Thanks Thank very you. much. Thank very you. much. Okay, um, that completes our action items, so we'll move on to our informational items, and the first and only one being Mr. Valentine mm -hmm. discussing sidewalk sidewalk plans for 2022. And um, could you please set this up for us? Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Um, so provided the, the board with um, the list first uh, top item, or the sidewalks that we're rolling over from last year. Um, so it listed off the sidewalks. We've got sidewalks on um, on Route 250 um, in and near um, some of the mixed-use development, the YMCA. Um, we've got uh, a piece of Parkview Drive, uh, Penfield Road up by Gentles Market. And Carrie's pulling it up now. Yep, trying to get it. And then, yeah. and then as well is, is Columbus Crossing. So those are the ones we talked about last year. Um, those are the ones that are carrying over from last year and are already in, in the budget. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so now looking into 2022, starting projects for that, started to compile a list of sidewalk suggestions we've had from people either in the past, ones we've received recently, um, and I'll run through those, um, you know, briefly. Is that in the Google Drive by chance, or is that? Uh, it is in the Google Drive. It is. should have been in Google Drive. I've never seen it. Mm, yeah. yeah. It was okay. item, Sorry. I think it said informational item A. Oh, it came from him. Mm-hmm. My apologies, but well, it's an informational item tonight, so not looking okay. for the board to make a decision on it, and okay. we can make sure you get a, a copy of it. So, mm -hmm. um, just kind of started to compile the requests we've had, um, and as we've done in the past, we identify you know the road, and we can put these on a map so you can look at them as well. Um, so we've got five mile line uh, between Embry and Crossbow is mm -hmm. the first one. Um, that's just shy of 3,200 feet, and then we put a cost or an estimated cost to that. Um, the next one is five mile line. Um, this is right up to the Webster, uh, from Rosebud up to the Webster town line. Uh, we've had a request for that along five mile. Um, Jackson Road from Wayland to the Jackson extension. So this is on the curve and part of what we call Old Jackson. Mm -hmm. um, we've had a re you know, request for that. Um, I know that neighborhood is still working on to decide which side of the road, get a petition together. Um, Atlantic Avenue from um, Five Mile to Fernstone. Um, this is a long stretch to complete, basically going from where it ends now, south side of the road, west of Baird. It runs to that, that private drive, so to kind of complete that block, so it would run along the, the country club. Um, that's 2,800 plus feet. Um, Clark Road, uh, we've had a request to extend the sidewalks up, um, and I think we brought it all the way up. Um, that doesn't include all of Clark Road, um, but that brings it up a, a little bit further. Mm -hmm. And then I think as we look at uh, what we do with Shadow Pines, how that develops out, you know, there may be an opportunity to kind of switch over sides and, and to do something in there. Mm -hmm. um, Ross Brook, um, that came in as a petition last year. Um, so we have both the original and new. So the original was on the south side of Ross Brook Drive. Then we got, or the board received another petition to put it on the north side as well as include Alta Vista. So we have those on here. So Mark, the original then w is out because the member, nobody, they didn't want the original, right? Uh, there was a petition that one person who had signed it then didn't want it anymore. So mm -hmm. they got another petition, but the petition to put it on the north side didn't include any of the neighbors on the north side. Mm. So, so this is a petition, so they want it on both sides of Rossbrook? I, I don't think they, they haven't come up to a, a consensus on where, I'm just, yeah, because we wouldn't out, do that. Right. I mean, yeah, I mean, okay. I think the neighborhood included it just because, because. Okay. just yeah. as people say, hey, I didn't see mine and it wasn't listed, okay. and I've so asked we for heard it back from them any, okay. any further than we did. Okay. No, history. and I say that the, the the second petition, the newer one, put it on the north side, but the neighbors on the north side weren't included in the petition, so <laughs> that that has some some issues as okay. well. But just trying to list out right what Good. we've received, and then also putting the call outs so when people say, hey, you missed mine, we can add it for. Right you know, a future meeting. Mm -hmm. Highland Drive, uh, Councilman Draw, I've talked about it with you mm -hmm. on that one. We've had requests for that one. Yeah. Um, as I've shared with you, that would be costly, but I know that's I something the- Slide over that cost. Something the board needs to, think that cost to take is, a look at. Yep. Um, it's probably, yep. You know, it's, 
about 125,000 for about yeah. six, 600 feet of sidewalk. I mean, as you know, Highland Drive, there's... Well, because of the gullies. Is there, is there any kind of way you could work with the school district since it could lead to better walkability to Cabell School? I but mean, you look for safe routes to school. We also have you know. accessible accessibility issues. Yes. Um, Highland Drive is not a wide road, and we don't right. have a wide right-of-way, so we need to secure easements from yeah. neighbors on either side. And to, probably the um, hardest part. <laughs> yeah, they would I mean, still like to talk to you, too. I know the neighbors over there. I mean, are willing to you know talk to you about that. Willing to have a conversation, mm -hmm. but knowing the elevation, the grades, we'd have to clear a lot of trees. Mm -hmm. We've got to mm -hmm. cut some hills down. We'd probably have to do some, um, you know, major regrading in there to bring it to ADA compliance. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it would, it's doable. I mean, anything's doable. It's just, what's the impact to the neighborhood? Yeah. Are the neighbors willing to grant an easement for that? Um, you know, there's some complications, mm -hmm. and you know, we can always look for safe routes to school money, but. I think that one we've got a little more complication than just having the money and allocation to it. We need buy-in from the neighbors that it's mm -hmm. going to affect. Mm -hmm. um, and then also have um, Plank Road, and this is a small piece, and mm -hmm. we just had this request. So there's one exception lot. This is right at um, Crown Point. So the Crown Point development comes off um, right near the um, sure. connection to State Road. So a little bit over from the church, so going down from the church, yeah, you okay. kind of cross in front of um, our, the church, our pond. And then there's an exception piece that's out. There was a, a single family home that at that time was not interested in sidewalks. Um, you know, if the board wants to pursue it, you know, we can reach out. I think that home has recently sold. So there may be interest in kind of filling in that gap. And then that would have sidewalks complete from Shoecraft down Plank Road through there. So that's a conversation on that. Um, I know that Mr. Linskoog addressed the board um, last week, and I don't have his apologize in this list, but Willow Pond Way was one of mm -hmm. um, his requests. And I think that could be something that within the CDBG funds and the board has already allocated for this year to request. Um, we could possibly look at next year as whether that would fall into that CDBG funding in, in that area. Um, you know, that's possible. So I can, I'll add those and itemize those up. But um, also wanted to, you know, put it out to the Penfield residents at large. Um, you know, kind of as a call to where else would you like to see sidewalks? What's your thoughts? What's your requests? You know, we can compile those, put costs to it, and then obviously, you know, have to come back at a future work session with this board, talk through them, mm -hmm. look at what our budget is. You know, I think the numbers we added up were in the millions already. Um, obviously, you know, that's not affordable or doable in our current budget. Um, right now we have $180,000 as our budget. Um, and I think our numbers, rough estimate, it is, uh, 1.4 million. So as always, we have more requests than we do money, um, which is a good thing. But you know that's something we'll have to come back to this, you know, board and kind of work through what can we afford. You know, mm -hmm. what's the timing? Then obviously, then we got to see if it's on a county road, a state road, mm -hmm. town road. Get into design, get into survey, get into all that process. But just kind of took tonight to review those. Um, you know, kind of brief the board on that, you know, as well as put a call out to the residents. If I missed one or two, my apologies. You know, we try to keep a running list of those and, you know, people again, put in more requests than we can fulfill. But, um, you know, we try to do some each year and continue to extend our sidewalk network um, as we just had the, the sidewalk uh, waiver review, right. you know, with a, a past mm -hmm. applicant, our, our policy continues and that continues to fill in gaps as new development comes in they're required to put sidewalks along their frontage mm -hmm. or if they don't put it along their frontage then they pay into the sidewalk fund and that money can also go to the budget as well so that you know money we, from the past we, waiver can be yeah. allocated to this and can you know, we like those ones where they they pay for they take care of them and pay for everything <laughs> maintenance yep. that's the ones we we really like mark that fifteen thousand you put for existing sidewalk repairs is that pretty much standard do we use that every year and more. I mean, that more. could go up. I mean, mm -hmm. I know Eric and his group are out every year doing repairs, and that's not enough yeah, for them, isn't. but that's what we have allocated right now. So as we look at, you mm -hmm. know, coming around to budget season again, you know, we can review that number. Um, we can review the sidewalk number, but, mm -hmm. you know, understand, you know, there's not unlimited budget, not unlimited amount, but, yeah, every year Eric spends his, his piece out of the DPW budget. They handle the repairs, um, and then on the engineering side, we handle the the design and construction of new sidewalks and then 
you know, work with DPW because then they end up, you know, plowing and maintaining them after. So I would like to actually talk with Barbara Cerdo about possibility of maybe using some ARPA funds. Yeah. Um, because the, it's, you know, this is definitely infrastructure. Yeah. It's definitely benefiting the entire community. It's about public safety. And, uh, you know, I'm certainly not at all suggesting we can do absolutely everything, but, mm -hmm. but there might be an opportunity to look at something a little different than we could otherwise. Sure. Um, I did receive a couple of public requests at my office, and I just wanted to let the public know that it, we, they were added mm -hmm. to this list. Um, if you do have an idea and you're sitting there and you have an idea f for another neighborhood, you know, please reach out to the town through our web page and we'll make sure that it's recorded. Just one point of clarification with this board in the past. Um, this board has done sidewalks within our, our long major corridors and, and cut through streets. Mm -hmm. So I know we'll have requests for certain neighborhoods going, well, I wish my neighborhood Supervisor's neighborhood, so we wish we had sidewalks within our neighborhood. Yeah. This board has looked at, you know, and offered to lay those out, design those, but that cost would be borne by that neighborhood since that's not benefiting the, the community at large. Um, so if, if your neighborhood wanted sidewalks, mm -hmm. not saying it can't happen, but the neighborhood would need to come together and pay for that, and you could bond that over a certain period of time. Um, yeah. Don't mean to preclude that conversation, but people say, hey, this is the, our chance to get it in. Thank you for AB, the clarification. ABC neighborhood, but <laughs> right. we're looking at, you know, mainline roads, right. um, interconnections along, you know, the main Didn't mean to open up a huge... <sighs> no, no just, just before people, yeah. you know, right. took that wrong and not saying that they can't, but I know right. the Fox Hill neighborhood came in the past and said we'd like to do sidewalks that, yeah. within our neighborhood. We said, you know, go out and get a petition, work with your neighbors, you'll have to form a district, and, you know, the yeah, neighbors no will have way. to pay for it. We, you know, the town offered to do the survey work, to do the design, have them constructed, but, you know, we would need easements from neighbors, we would need you know, implications, and they've gone off and, and had been unsuccessful, at least in that one neighborhood, to come back to get enough neighbors to agree to go ahead and do that or, right. or pick the side of the road that, that often, and we direct that back to people that come in and say, we'd love to see a sidewalk between here and here if we need to obtain easements, if we need to get, you know, anything for that area it's helpful one to get all those neighbors to agree it makes it our life a heck of a lot easier um you know than going into an area that somebody may want sidewalks to connect from here to there but if the neighbor is unwilling to grant us an easement um, what was the 1841 uh clark road again was is that um i believe 1825 is where it ends today and 1841 is where they asked us to extend it to but that's up um so as you start to head up the hill on, on Clark Road. Before the pond, you mean? And I think, and, and uh, Carrie's pulling it up right now. Um, so as we head up the hill. Towards the Nonville Ridge, is what we're saying? I think yep. that's where. Right. Because, so, you know, that, that so makes so much sense. You can see the end of, I think, 1825 yeah. is where it stops, kind of right. mid, mid yard on the left, so up on the left edge. Today, so they were looking to extend it up. I think if you know we did, you know, look to extend it, you know, we'd extend, um, you know, further to the south and then, you know, stop it. Um, so if you come down, so you can see the sidewalk on the west side, and as you head, give me this computer is uh, taking a hot second. Yeah, it's taking. It's okay, a you moment. know, but I, I would love to see how much it, it's got to cost a lot, but how much it would cost to go from there to like Whalen and then up to Atlantic, because I think I said that when we first got Shadow Pines, that you know, it'd be so important to have accessibility because we always talk about we want our sidewalks to um, be access to parks. Well, it's not a park, but it can be seen as something along those lines for so many people that would like accessibility Great, to yeah. walk to it. I mean, we can run that cost. I mean, I'm sure that's again gonna be in the millions. To oh yeah, it'd be a ton, but it's, it could be the beginning though. To do that, start um, if you keep going down. One day. <laughs> so I, I mean, I think that infrastructure. If we did look to Clark to extend the sidewalk up, I would, you know, recommend at least bring it up to Skyview. Yeah. You know, kind of as a, they asked for those specific addresses, but I think bring it up to Skyview, and then I think at Skyview, it makes more sense to me to flip it to the other side then, because um, once you get past Denonville Ridge, the road drops off significantly, right. and you've got a guide rail there, and not really much room to put a sidewalk right. in. If you could get it from there down to uh, Whalen then at least all those people that live in 
those areas, there's all those subdivisions. They have an ability to walk around instead of cut through the, the uh, shadow pines. Yeah, I mean, there is a, the yeah. town does own an access off of Harwood that you can get into well, the park too, but that's, through the, the back. Yeah, there we've like got, that. you know, pathways we're looking at yep. adding in. As I said, we're going to have more requests than funds. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so not to disappoint, you know, residents and every sidewalk is beneficial and they're all great ideas. But, um, you know, fortunately, at some point, the board's going to have to make some hard decisions of here's what we're doing. Here's what we can afford. Here's what is going in and. Okay, thank you. Are there any other comments or questions for Mark? No. Good job. Thank you. Great. So we'll return to this. We'll table this for the next work session. Um, make sure that we collect any mm -hmm. comments and then we'll move from there. All right, uh, we have a number of held items we're still holding. Uh, is there any old or new business before the board? No, ma'am. All right, um, and then our next work session will be April 13th, April already. Mm. Um, and no, there being no further business, I will declare this meeting adjourned at 8.24 p.m. Thank you very much. Thank you to PCTV and to Greg. <laughs> I agree. I agree.